So in this lesson, we're going to dive in understanding risk and reward. It's going to be a little bit longer. So grab a coffee or a tea or any other drink and just listen to this because this is the most... I wish I'd known this when I first started trading 20 years ago because it would have saved me so much time and pain. And nobody ever taught me it. I didn't have any mentorship. I didn't have any trading college. I was all on my own. But luckily, you've got us to help you through this because you're here on the beginner's course really learning what it's all about. And this is what I've known then. Risk reward, and we're gonna look at the matrix here. On the left-hand side, it's the percentage of winning trades you have. Simple to understand. Down the bottom, a little bit more complicated. It, we're looking at here, this is the ratio of a profit and loss ratio. What it means is, if on the, the one means that, if you're risking one, one of something, let's say 50 pounds, 50 dollars, 50 euros, you're risking one. If it's 50 pounds and then you're making 100 pounds, that is a two to one, okay? Reward, risk, profit ratio. So you're making two to risk one. This case scenario, you're risking one to make one. So your trade makes one as much as you risked one. So you risked 50 and you made 50. In this one here, you risked you know, 50, but you actually made one. So you made 25. Or let's say you risk 100 and it's you make the profit less than 100. That's not good. We want to get your risk reward or profit loss ratio up. You want to make more than you're, than you're risking. Now, if you have a two to one ratio, then you only have to make 33% winning trades. You don't even have to be that good of a trader to make 30% winning trades. But if your risk if if your profit is double the amount of risk on the trade, great. I want that all day long. All day long. That's what you've got to get to. If you've got a risk reward ratio of 1 to 1, you're you're risking 50 to make 50. You need 50% winning trades. You're going to break even or maybe lose a little bit because of the cost of trading. Now, if you're making, you know, or I should say if you're making a risk of 1 and and you're losing 2, you're going to have to have 60 well, if you're risking 1 and making 2, I beg you, let me start on that one again. If you're risking 2 and you're making 1, so you're making less than what you're risking, you need 66% winning trade. So it starts to ramp up. We don't want that. We would want you to get, this is why the pro trading system is so good and the tracks, because they keep you in trades for a lot longer than you would do manually trading. That's just part of our systems, all right? So make sure you understand that, guys, because that's really important for trading because we the secret juice then is we need to hang on to our winners and cut our losses short. And you, then you don't have to be the wolf of Wall Street to make a very nice living out of trading. Let's dive into the next section here. We're going to talk about price movement because we need to know the stop placement and how much we're going to risk per trade and, and what it basically means to us. So here we are with an example of the euro versus the US dollar. Now, the euro versus the US dollar is the most currency, most traded currency pair. That's the base currency on the left. On the right hand side, it's the quotes currency. So one euro is worth one sixteen zero one dollars OK. Now, the buying price, which is over here on the right hand side, is called the offer. In this case, it's at one sixteen zero three. The selling price is the bid. OK. 116.02. Now, in between, you can see this price is different to this price. The buying price is always greater than the selling price. And in the middle, there's a spread. All right. In this case, it's one pip. Markets that are volatile will have wider spreads. All right. Remember that? Markets that are volatile will have wider spreads. You can see here on this ticket, price ticket, there's a 0 0.6 spread. The euro dollar is the most traded currency pair. And so, it's the spreads are nice and tight. Currency movements though, what does a price movement in points look like? Euro dollar from 123 to 12301 was a gain of one pip. Okay, now it's the fourth digit you're looking at. Look on the right hand side of the price because that's where the, the action takes place. Dollar yen from 10801 to 10809, you know, the big numbers on the left don't change that often. But the little numbers on the right of the actual currency pair do change, and this is a eight-point movement. 
pound US dollar from 156.02 to 157. Now look at the, the two big numbers there have moved from 56 to 57. So it's increased in size of 98 pips. Now, whatever the price movement, you have to multiply that by your position size. If you're doing a spread bet at one pound per point, a spread bet, that's 98 pounds it's moved. That's eight pounds it's moved. That's one pound. If you're doing funded bets on FX markets, you're dealing in lot sizes, mini lots, micro lots, and full contracts. They've all got their different value for each currency. And it's a little bit more complicated if you're doing FX in funded accounts because you just got to get used to your position sizing for each currency. Now, if you take a little look at this PIP movement, let's say your currency or your market moved 20 pips, also known as points. If you had a position size of five pounds, that means it moved 100, you made 100 pounds profit, or you would have been stopped out at 100 pounds loss. Now a stop is what you place with your broker to get you out the trade if it goes against you. And remember, you're gonna have losing trades. Even if you have 50% losing trades, you can still make money. So you've gotta get over that. Of course, we wanna get our win rate up lots of winning trades we want but we want big winning trades if something moves 50 pips per day at 30 pounds per point which is the called the position size that's going to be 1500 now the key is this what is your account size that's the key and i'm going to put a for account because what we want to do is we want to make sure we're not placing trades and we make sure that we have a stop loss in place on every trade that's at too big a position size. We don't want to be risking 5% on a trade if we had a £2,000 count here. We only want to be risking, and to start trading, you don't even want to risk anything. You want to just be demo trading so you can prove that you can do this. But once we really get into live trading, we do smaller position sizes, then you can ramp it up. We want to be doing risk of 0.5, half a percent, 1%, 2%. And then when you get really good at this, you can start doing 3%, so maybe even 5%. All right? But we don't want to be doing anything more than 1% to start with in our account. So how do you work out your position size on a trade? Well, you need a couple of numbers here. You're going to need what you're buying at. Okay, you're going to need that. What's that price? What does it look like? Is it 150? And remember, any any market's going to have a price. Look at those two numbers at the end. And let's say you're going to have a stop. So your stop is going to sell you this position if the price gets down to let's say 149.80. Where do you place your stop? You're asking. Well, that's done through your charting software and your charting system it will well for example our pro trend system will tell us where to place the stop okay it's done automatically for you if i'm day trading my stops are something like 10 to 15 points if i'm swing trading my stop is something like 50 points away okay now this is important. So if there's a 80 uh, if there's a 20 point difference here now you got to work out or you got to know what your account size is. So if your account size is 2000 or if you're a funded account trader you might have 25,000 or 50,000. You got to work out now if the price moves 20 points at 1 pound a point that is a 20 pounds loss. Okay, so what percentage is that of your account size? As I said, you need to work out the 1% and the 2%. Once you've done that on a regular basis, you'll know that 1% of £2,000 is this. And as your account grows to three, five, six thousand, you're going to want your position size is going to increase. Because 1% of 5,000 is greater than 1% of 2,000. Knowing this is crucial.
understanding your percentage you need you need three main numbers your account size what you're going to buy at and when you, what you're going to get out of the trade if it goes wrong work find out how many points that is okay then think about what's your position size let's say it's five pounds per point well if it moves five, 20 points at five pounds per point there's your maximum loss on the trade do you really want that maximum loss with that account size go small guys go small until you get experience then build it up and then we can do so much when it comes to risk management and managing trades because you know we don't this is too much for this lesson but we don't have to do one trade only when we get into a trade we could do multiple trades so let me just explain that quickly let's say i want to go long the euro dollar okay i could literally be risking my position size let's say my maximum position size was 10 pounds per point well i could do two pound one trade another two pound at another trade another two pound at another trade it's called scaling into the trade but i need to know my maximum loss if all those trades go against me all right that's something a bit more advanced and that's how i like to get into trades as well but understanding those two numbers buy price the stop in your account then work out your position size on the trade